Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. This is Dr. TK, and so I'm super excited to talk about this topic today. Um, just a few announcements. We are hosting our private practice bootcamp starting on March 18th. Um, you can find out more by checking the show notes or heading to drtk.com forward slash links. But this podcast episode was actually prompted by a therapist in the group when we prompted a question about, do you know your worth? And so one of the things that we do from time the time is that we pose a question more like a discussion thread. And the question was, how much do you charge for individual therapy per hour right now? How much do you want to charge right now? Because some people are in different phases of their business. And then if there is a difference between how much you charge, how much you want to charge, then I want you to talk about how you feel about that difference. And so a lot of people were engaging in the discussion in our private Telegram group. And what I found was that there were a good amount of limiting beliefs. There were processing questions around who am I more... um, like imposter syndrome statements, who am I to be charging that amount? And I'm really excited for therapists to put themselves out there, be vulnerable and actually have these conversations because sometimes we don't feel like it may be safe to talk about why we don't want to charge, you know, the amount that we are worth. So what I'm going to go into right now is three mindset shifts that you want to embrace so that you can have a different perspective of looking at how much your time is worth. And so let's go ahead and hop into it. So number one is lack of confidence in value. And so when you think about your confidence, sometimes what happens is that we, you know, look at, okay, we have to have a consultation. We have to put ourselves out there. We are marketing to our ideal client, but what if they don't want to pay the amount? And what tends to happen is some people will go into a spiral rabbit hole and they have no evidence to prove that people don't even want to, you know, that people want to pay that rate. And so the first mindset reframe related to confidence is that you want to take out a pen and sheet of paper, pause this podcast episode if needed, and you want to identify all of the opposite things that are not in alignment with um, or going against the limiting belief that people won't pay your rate. So for example, when I think about me becoming a clinical psychologist, the requirements were in California that we had to do four to five years of grad school and then we received practicum hours. That does not count toward licensure. However, we were getting supervision, we were having tests, we were in class applying what we learned. And so sometimes when we go into the licensure realm and we start looking at getting clients in our own business, we forget that we had thousands of hours, a lot of them that did not even count, but that you were being evaluated. You were seeing clients back then and they definitely saw the value in the services that you were providing. And so what you want to do on your sheet of paper is list out everything that qualifies you to get paid your actual dollar amount you want to get paid per hour. So for example, some of the things that comes to mind when I reflect back on my experience is I had almost a thousand hours of practicum hours while in school, 1500 hours of pre-doc and that was a minimum we actually did about 2500 because we were at an internship site for a year working full time before we graduated from our doctoral program then post graduation we had to complete the other half of the 1500 to get to 3000 Then for myself, it took me a little while to keep scheduling the test. And so I was still under supervision. I was still seeing clients. I was still getting feedback under supervision. But bottom line, if I calculate all of the time that I've done in practicum and internship, all of the things that I've done in previous work sites, working at group homes, I would say that I earned the ability to say that I am providing services that is valued at. And I think that's like a a second reframe right there. Instead of saying, this is how much therapy costs, look at mental health services as an investment because of what somebody will get on the other side, okay? And so with confidence right now, 
everything that you've done to get to where you are now and actually look at your number again and ask yourself, am I actually valued at the investment that I am asking individuals to pay for services, okay? Number two is uh, fear of loss in business. So I say hashtag thirst trap. So we talk about this a lot in our boot camp in terms of therapists will, you know, state out loud how much money they want to make per hour. But then in the same breath, they will also say, but I can't turn that client away. If I say no, I'm going to be losing money. And I want to give a reframe again. Is it that you're losing money or is it that you're asserting boundaries, having assertive communication with prospective clients that their investment desire is not aligned with your business vision. I know I said a lot of hefty words in there. If we break it down, your business is not you. You Or for example, depending on your entity structure, you may be a server or an employee or a contractor of your company. So you want to think about your company similar to a child. What does that child need to thrive? It needs food. It needs its basic needs taken care of. Because as humans, if we don't drink water, if we don't put something in our body, our body will slowly start to wither away. The same thing can happen for your business. And so a reframe would be, I'm not losing business. I am leaving room to align myself with the clients who are technically gonna feed your business. And what I mean by feeding your business, it is energetically because when you serve those clients, you feel good. When you are paid your value, you feel good. And the last thing you would want to do is set yourself up so that after the second or third session, you realize all the work that you are doing with this particular client, like you do with every other client, but because you're not getting paid the amount that you see that you are worth inside, of course, because you may not say it out loud, what could happen unintentionally is that you start to resent that client and they didn't do anything wrong. They let you know how much they can pay. You said, okay, versus letting them know that right now I do not have any sliding scale or low fee spots available. This is the investment for individual services. And then if you aren't able to talk to them about that, then you will end up taking them on and then you may be resentful later. So be very, very mindful of the energy that you are putting out because you're going to get it right back in your business, okay? So number three, one of my favorites is not understanding marketing. So when you look at your hourly rate that you desire to get paid, um, first tip is go out there online, talk to other therapists in your geographical location, but also talk to individuals that are in your niche. And you want to get a wide range of an understanding of how much different people are charging. Now, of course, sometimes people can say they charge a certain amount um, or people invest in services because of how long they've been in the field. Um, Some people are certified they have evidence-based practices to back them up. And but at the end of the day, it's really about your belief system. Do you believe that you are worthy of someone coming to you, letting you know their problem? You are able actually to solve their problem. And really, if we can highlight something huge, is you want to ask yourself, what is the transformation that I know I can help them get to based on their problem? and the mechanisms, the tools that I use to help them get to the solution. Because here's the thing, therapy does not happen during the session. Therapy actually happens when the person leaves the session. You really only have 45 to 50 minutes. You cannot expect, it's very similar to me serving a kid. I would tell parents all the time, I don't have a magical wand to undo something that's been present for five, 10, 15 years, depending on their child or um, young adult child, right? In two sessions, I cannot magically make it go away. First of all, the person has to be willing to make small changes at a time. And over time, they will see bigger shifts. And so everybody who's involved has to be patient. But I always have my eye on the prize and I'm always looking at 
What is the desired outcome? How am I showing up to help them get to that outcome? Which means that you are technically, as we call it in our academy, you're creating your own theoretical orientation to help somebody get from the consultation pers- uh, you know, standpoint to the end of treatment. And so when you think about the fact that you're changing someone's whole life, that is what we talk about when we say, what is therapy valued at? What is this person able to do when you're done with therapy with them? Are they able to perform better at their job? In turn, they get paid more. They're able to position themselves for a promotion. Maybe you help them decrease their anxiety or depression. So now they're able to go to class. They're able to pass all of their grades that will position them to get certified, be able to get a job, open up their own business. Even though you are not coaching them in business, you're not coaching them to write a resume. The services that you are offering in treatment is highly valued because of what's on the other side of what they're having problems with. So here's a neat trick that I would love for you to apply. Let's just say for number's sake that you want to charge $100 per session. You want to look at the $100 as face value. What they're getting in terms of value is $1,000, 10 times the amount Because see, people don't know in marketing the difference between benefits and value. Benefits is we're going to meet 15 times. We are going to meet each session for 45 minutes. These are the steps to therapy. I will send you homework or send homework to you through the client portal after every session. Benefits are more like a checklist of what you get during the therapy process. The investment of their time, what they put in, implementing the strategies and I'm going to say time and services that you're providing as a whole to get them to the solution to their problem. That's what they're investing in. So you want to make it crystal clear when you do an intake, start asking and paying very close attention to what that client wants at the end of treatment. And ask yourself, how much is that worth? Is it worth the $100 that you want to say because you're living in a state of fear? You have limiting beliefs? Or do you recognize, wow, they want to do all of that. If I help them with this one area, they can do all 10 of those things. My gosh, that's valued at $100,000, which means that you can really say instead of 100, actually say the amount that you decide that your time is valued at, which is, let's just say $185. All right. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this podcast episode. Again, if you want to participate in the private practice bootcamp that we have coming up in the spring or any ones that we have coming up in the future, make sure to click the link in the show notes, head to drtk.com forward slash links. And if you want to do more behind the scenes, I post in my stories throughout the week, depending on the season will determine what I show related to mental health business, work-life integration, and really just applying all the things that we talk about on this podcast, then head over to Dr. TK Psych on Instagram. But until then, I'll see you in the next podcast. Bye.